Hey guys, it's Graham. What's cracking? Let's talk about why I am not a booktuber. What the heck even is that? Well, for years before I even had a channel, every once in a while, the algorithm would push a prominent booktuber into my feed and say, hey, check this out. And I would look at it and it just never clicked with me. Um, it seems like there are a lot of the things that these big prominent book promoter accounts have in common, and uh, I don't really line up with any of them. Um, it seems really, I don't know, clickish is the wrong word, but it seems very trend-oriented. It's a whole lot of in-group stuff <clears throat> that's all external to the books being discussed, that you've got to be up on and current on and know who's who and it's very high schooly, right? Like you've got to be up on this person in fantasy and that person in romance and this in YA and here are the opinions that you're allowed to have and here's the way that you've got to conduct yourself and here are the books that you have to stand. Flying hell, I hate that word. It's, it's not at all a group that I click with, but on top of that, it's not a mentality that I really want to pursue. It's it's not a lifestyle that I'm going to commit myself to, and it's certainly not a methodology that I'm going to build my work around. You guys are used to hearing background noise when I'm recording, and that's because I do this on the drive home. I have other things in my life. I have much bigger things in my life. I've just realized that I can fit the recording for these videos in you know, while I'm doing the drive for at least 10, more than likely 12, and often 14 hours a day, I'm in the truck, I'm doing work, and I'm not in a position to record. And more often than not, I'm, I'm listening to stuff, podcasts, streaming shows, mostly audiobooks. And if I'm having a really labor-heavy day, I'm just listening to my workout playlist, and that's that. But on the 15 to 20 minutes that I get to drive home, it's a little bit quieter in here. I'm not sitting between two diesel engines. And uh, I'll kind of want to wind down from putting stuff into my brain. And I want to unload it into the microphone and share my thoughts. More often than not, I'll have listened to a book that day. Or I'll have finished kind of a longer one. And that's long enough for me to just kind of spit it out, give you guys the rundown, and recommend it. I'm never, ever going to chase a trend. A lot of the books that, or excuse me, a lot of the booktubers that get recommended to me from time to time, it yeah. feels like they're all plugging the same books. I briefly touched a couple of weeks ago on uh, Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. That's an extremely popular book right now, and I've looked into it two or three times. I have no desire to read it. Um, there's one that I read last fall, maybe last summer, that came highly recommended and had ridiculous ratings through Amazon, through Goodreads, through all those sites. And it seemed very, very similar in concept to Red Rising. It was called The Will of the Many. All I remember was that it was this 28-hour audiobook monstrosity, and it started pretty encouragingly. Jeez, Mustangs. And then it immediately hit a wall and just became this impenetrable, boring, navel-gazing slog fest. And I, I almost did a video on why, and then I realized I don't even care to explain why. And there was this needling little sensation in the back of my head that said, Oh, but it'll draw viewers to the channel. And I immediately stomped on that voice. I said, that is not why I do things. It's right up there with the principle that, like, I'm not here to pick fights. The closest I got to that, well, twice last year, was when I aired out my gripes about the Red Rising series of late, like the latter three books and how much they sucked compared to the first three. And the epic lit RPG rant, which was really an accident, but it did also turn me on to some better books in that genre. And 
while I got a ton of engagement on that, I could have very easily doubled, tripled down on that, but then you get stuck in it. You commit to the bit and I mean, if authenticity and honesty matters to you at all, you are suddenly stuck in that bit. I think of a, of a YouTuber in the, in the movie criticism space uh, named Doomcock. He's got a pretty elaborate setup in his basement or wherever. There's a costume, there's good production effects, there's good sound recording, there's, all, like, there's some cool stuff to it. And ostensibly, this is a guy with contacts in Hollywood who leak news and rumors to him. And he got one big piece right a couple of years ago and his channel blew up and it all had to do with whether Disney was going to fire Kathleen Kennedy for mishandling Star Wars. And he'd been, like I said, he'd been right about like one or two things and people wanted the Kathleen Kennedy firing to be real. Never, ever going to happen. And there's a reason why other prominent and trusted critics in the YouTube movie space never bid on that just because they had never had a reason to. And maybe they were tempted by the engagement that Doomcock was getting, but they valued their authenticity and their reliability rating a lot more than that. And they never bid on it. And eventually the bit got tired. And I don't know, like there's still a bit of a hanger on audience that's reliant on these little pieces of rumor meat that Doomcock feeds them, but most people have tuned out. Like, they're just not falling for it anymore, but he's he's kind of trapped in the bit. That's where his success is, and that's all he's got to do. Me, I don't want to do that. I don't want to get stuck in something that I don't really believe in. I still believe that most lit RPG sucks, that most of it is crap, and most of it shouldn't be published. Boom, there that is. But I'm not going to make 15 videos on it just to monetize it and have that become part of my creative identity or whatever in the video space. I talked with uh, Brett Kane about this on the Ironside podcast when I was on his show a couple of months ago. And I still stand by this. I value my authenticity. And I don't care if I do a video and it gets 10 views or a thousand or a million. I mean, the million would be nice because you make a few dollars off of it. But what is the objective here? The objective is to, to just find books that have enriched my imagination and in many cases made me better than I was. Find those and share them authentically for what they are. I don't want to have to get stuck in, t in just reading every new big thing that comes out so that I can have an opinion on it, so that I can catch the wave of the algorithm, so that I can get 50,000 views and rely on that for my bread and butter. I think it would be cool to do videos and streaming as a huge part of my income so that I could kind of scale back the number of hours that I'm behind the wheel and getting screwed over by dispatch, but you know, right now there's an honesty to what I do with the day job, and that's that I, I know that I'm putting in real work. I'm providing a crucial surface between a, uh, a manufacturer and uh, another service provider, in this case, hospitals and rest homes. You know, that, that really needs to be done. I know that personally, like right now, my opinions, my voice in this space is not so valuable that I need to be throwing it after every single big trend and big title that comes along. I don't need to be making 10 videos a month about Brandon Sanderson or George R. Martin or whoever. I don't even know who's big in YA anymore. I haven't really been reading YA for, shoot, a long time now. It went downhill many moons ago, and I'm also 39 years old, so make of that what makes the most sense to you. But it's just not a space where I care to compete, because I would have to become a fake version of myself to do it. And, you know, let's be real, I am 
ruggedly handsome, but some of the more prominent booktuber accounts are girls with makeup on with uh, the camera strategically placed to frame certain things. And hey, power to them. If it gets the simps in there and you get some money off of it and uh, it's all done tastefully, then have at it. But I've got to rely on the value of my intellectual opinion. And uh, from what I've seen, it doesn't seem that BookTube is all about that. This all kind of came to a head a few days ago when uh, some dude, I, I can't even remember what channel it was, had this video that got pushed into my algorithm. It's like, oh, five fantasy novels that you absolutely have to be reading. And like, not only did all five of them not even remotely move the needle for me, <laughs> one of them was The Will of the Many. And on top of that, I couldn't stand this dude's presentation. You can just tell, like if you've ever dealt with a door-to-door -door salesman who you could tell is like really trying to lean into a, a, a scripted performance or just something that they don't personally believe, but you can tell that they're, they're giving you the spiel because they really, really want you to be on board and, and buy whatever it is they're selling. The, the bug-eyedness of it and the the weird energy and the, the talking fast and just trying to be a showman, showman when you're not like that's, that's not me. And it never will be. I've tried sales jobs. <laughs> I am not a salesman. I am a grunt. I can talk to a customer. I can smooth things over. I can win them over with stacking cases for them, but I'm, I'm not going to be the guy that, sits there and tries to convince them that they need something that they that they don't. Authenticity. That's the, the name of the game, and I just think that booktubers largely lack it. And I have no desire to be like the, the masses of it. I would rather just be able to say the things that I'm personally convinced are, are true and valuable. Closing note, I was listening to a streaming show this morning, Steel Toe Morning Show. It's only like the second time I've listened to it. Ricada recommended it, and I checked it out. It's like, okay. It runs long for a streaming show, but I can dip in and out of it if I'm in between podcasts or whatever. And the guy kind of covers current events. Sometimes he gets a little bit cro uh, crass, and I, I tune out. But uh, somebody chimed in in the chat and wanted his opinion on Nickelback or was was critiquing the fact that he thinks Nickelback is great and uh, he he hit back hard on the whole like oh Nickelback sucks type thing because and I, you know, I think he might be right about this people only hate Nickelback because it became a meme to hate Nickelback and therefore it became cool and funny to hate Nickelback and I've told my fair share of Nickelback jokes over the years but they've got plenty of, of songs that I enjoy plenty of them that I don't for me, they're just another band out there. But hey, Chad Kroger is, uh, last I heard, he's dating Avril Lavigne, so he's probably beating you. <laughs> but anyway, um, people need to be less susceptible to, uh, to these cultural memes, to the herd mentality. People need to be able to say that a best-selling and popular book was bad and they don't understand the appeal of it or that a bad movie is actually really cool and here's why it's okay show your work be real about it that's it it's really all you got to do anyway i'm gonna go home and hang out with my son give him some writing lessons he's got to uh get his book submitted in pretty quick here to this contest that he's doing he's <laughs> he's still convinced that i'm going to turn it into an audiobook and he's going to make some money off of it and i gotta tell him so the bad news <laughs> son i i don't go to punch in the clock at 1 a.m every day because i'm so good at selling books but he's got the rest of his life to be disappointed i'll i'll let him float that dream for a few more days anyway thank you guys for listening drive safe see you out there